this video we're going to be looking at the VSOL GPON OLT. Uh, the one I have specifically is the single port. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, by default, this device has an IP address of 192.168.8.200. So on your laptop, well, what I did was I connected an Ethernet port to the GE2 port on the OLT itself. And I'm using that as my management port and the default VLAN of 1. This device has a PON port, a GE1, GE2, and a 10 gig GE3 opt, um, SFP port. So out of the box, I'm going to show you everything I did to get this working. And how I have mine set up today is I've got a managed switch connected to GE1, and it's set up as a trunk port currently. When I first did this configuration, I set it up as a uh, access port for VLAN 2 and I connected my internet modem into here just so I could configure some ONUs to get internet access. So the first thing you had to do was go into OLT configuration VLAN and by default VLAN 1 is there. So I added a VLAN and I'll just add another one here so we can go through the process and I just called it VLAN 2 and then from VLAN port this is where I made the changes out of the box you're going to only have VLAN 1 it's going to be set up as a hybrid port and it's going to be untagged so what I'm doing currently is VLAN 1 where I've just got it connected to uh, GE2 for my laptop for management. I've got it set as hybrid and untagged for VLAN 2. I've got it connected to my managed switch in GE1 so it's set up as a trunk port and it's tagged and we'll go ahead and do the same thing for this one and submit. So that was the only changes I'd made on the VLAN configuration. A lot of the manuals you'll find online will drive you crazy because because they're not consistent about how this device is actually configured. The other thing you'll want to do as soon as you get the device is look for the latest uh, software version update. 114 is the latest for this particular model, the V1600GS-F. The next thing you'll want to do is start connecting your ONUs. And you can set up profiles, but if you're just beginning, I would highly recommend not setting up the profiles and just leaving this blank. As you can see, there's no profiles, just the default ones that came with. And so from your ONU configuration, I'm going to delete uh, an ONU. And currently I've got this connected into a 16 port splitter and then I've got four ONUs connected to it. So the power level is quite high. It's higher than it should be. The optical power is probably at the higher limit. Uh, the biggest confusion about this setup is when you're looking at the tabs because there's multiple ways to do things it seems. Just like the profile configuration you can set it up as a group level or an individual device level. So here you'll see modify. So there's an ONU profile that you can bind. So if you created a profile, once you get everything situated and then say you deployed 50 ONUs, you could set them to auto configure to the ONU profile that you choose. That way all the settings are already configured. So we're gonna start looking at this unit here. I'm going to delete it completely. So it's deleted the configuration from it. I'm going to reset the ONU so it's starting over from scratch. I'm just going to press the power button on the ONU until it reboots. And then here in a moment we will see it reappear. And if you go to ONU status, you can see that it's syncing the MIB. So anytime you plug in a new device, you can see it will sync up. Okay, so now we can see it's working. Going back to the ONU list, we can now configure it. 
So I'm not sure exactly all the details about uh, transport and the gym port and service because I'm kind of new to this too, but I'm just trying to share with other people what I've learned so far in the last couple days working with these devices. So the first thing you have to do is create a uh, transport and then you create a gym port, which is the encapsulation. And then you create a service port. So this is where you can select uh, what you're wanting the device to do on what VLANs. So I always use VLANs one and two, but if you just wanted to get it on the internet only, you could just do VLAN two, commit. And then the WAN tab. Uh, so currently it looks like we have It's set for bridge mode on LAN 1. So you can change it to route. That way you would get DHCP from the ONU itself. You would then tell it you want to tag the traffic. And VLAN 2 is our VLAN for the internet. The service mode, you need to leave it as internet. Changing it to other disables it. And then you can choose if you want it to be assigned to LAN 1 or LAN 2 ports on the back of the ONU. If you had multiple uh, LAN ports, they would be listed here. And this device supports up to eight SSIDs. So you could have different SSIDs per VLAN based on this configuration. So let's say I want to tag VLAN 2 on LAN 1 in bridge mode. So I'm going to hit submit. Then you're going to hit submit again. And then it saves the configuration. And I've noticed that it's pretty quick about applying. Uh, most changes, they apply within five seconds and do not require a reboot. So you see here we have the eight SSIDs. If you go over to the Wi-Fi tab, you can see those eight SSIDs. And this is where you can actually configure the name of them and configure the um, security settings on them. So there's a whole lot of tabs and it can be kind of overwhelming when you're first starting out with it. But this is the basics of getting the device online and working with a managed switch and passing a VLAN to a WAN port.